Hello, and welcome to another exciting episode of the Scaling Therapy Practice podcast. This is the show where we encourage you to take intentional steps towards sustainable growth. In today's episode, we're continuing our interview with Gordon Brewer. Uh, he's from the Practice of Therapy and the SciCraft Network. And this is part two of Rapid Fire Strategies for Marketing Your Therapy Services. Before I begin the show, I, I want to invite you to take part in a learning event with me. Uh, connecting with your ideal client is something we all want to do, whether you're selling therapy services, therapy products, marketing your solo practice, marketing a group practice, selling uh, digital courses. You want to connect with your ideal client. Before we dive into the show, I wanted to share with you a way you can connect with your ideal client that's easy to do, doesn't cost you too much money, and it helps you build a relationship with your clients before you even ask for a sale. I'm talking about that special tool called a lead magnet. Some people call it a gift. Some people call it value add. But a lead magnet is really just a valuable piece of content that you, you give away. You give it away to connect with your audience. This, this piece of value, this content, generally solves one problem for the, uh, the audience, the listener. And it invites them to develop a, a, a stronger, a deeper relationship with you even before you're asking them for money. It's giving them value and demonstrating your worth before they do, um, you know, do a financial transaction with you. It, it builds on that no like, and trust factor, and it helps the right client find you because the right client is going to be searching for what you are giving. And this helps you find the client you can help the most. So these are called lead magnets. Josh Brummel, the co-founder of Therapy Flow, is going to be presenting a simple and effective strategy to use lead magnets to generate more clients. It's in the learning event. We're calling Seven Steps for More Clients Using Lead Magnets. The webinar is coming up quickly. It's on January 25th, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central Time. And you can register on the page www.coursecreationstudio.com forward slash seven steps. That's coursecreationstudio.com forward slash seven steps. There'll be a link in the show notes, a link on the YouTube, a link on. Um, a blog post that there'll just be links. I'm really excited about what Josh brings to the table. He's very clear with his message. I love, and, and I've met him in person and I just, I really like what he has to offer. So if you're thinking about what, what you can do with lead magnets, come to the, come to the webinar, come to the learning event and we'll help you out there. I hope you sign up. A little bit more about this episode here, part two of our rapid fire marketing strategies is we're going to dive into marketing and how it can positively impact your therapy practice. We're going to talk about creating authentic relationships with social media and just being real in all that you do. I'm really excited about having Gordon on the show. He's got years of experience, years of consulting, years of running his own business. And he, we're going to glean some wisdom from that. Like, it's just a really great conversation with him. So whether you're just starting out, whether you're solo uh, group or something else, something in between, thinking about going forward, this podcast can help you scale with your marketing with the val valuable insights from Gordon. Finally, stay through to the end. I'm going to talk about wrapping up season two that uh, we've, this is uh, the final episode of season two, believe it or not. I said that two episodes ago, but then I did uh, this episode with Gordon on the rapid fire strategies, just the review. And then we're going to talk at the end, we're going to talk about season three. What are we going to do in season three? What are the things coming up? How can we scale your practice maybe beyond the chair, you know, maybe freeing up some time or how do you use some of your, your extra time? That's, that's a misnomer. I don't think therapists really have extra time, but how can you prioritize some of your time to build, uh, to build out something that's going to give you back some of your uh, freedom in your life besides being tied to a chair? So 
I'm really excited about that and what what's in store for season three. So stay tuned to the end for that. I'm excited about what Gordon brings. So uh, make sure you try to write down one thing that you're going to learn. You don't want to try everything probably all at once from this episode, but uh, be, become a master of one thing, get some insights, and we'll see you in the episode. Wow. Uh, so the power went out for about four hours. And so we are back recording on a different day. So we might look or sound a little bit different, but uh, welcome back. Gordon, we were talking about social media and just how authentic posts get the views and likes and mm -hmm. shares. Um, right. What, what do you, what's your view or um, how do you use social media for your marketing? Yeah. So one of the things, um, I think this kind of ties in with social media. Um, I think people can stress out a lot about social media in terms of, you know, feeling like they've got to be on different, you know, I've got to be on, you know, Instagram, I've got to be on TikTok and I've got to be on Twitter and all of those, you know, Facebook or whatever. But I think the main thing is, is to just stick to one, the one or two or the ones that you are involved with anyway, the ones that you're using, um, you know, just in your daily life or whatever, if you use social media, just stick to using just a few, because I think uh, kind of like we were talking about with niches, trying to cast a broad net really doesn't get many fish. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, sure, if you were huge, I mean, if you were a huge, you know, organization, you know, or whatever. That might be helpful. Um, but the other thing I'd say about social media, and this is what I do, is look at outsourcing. Um, you know, I'm, um, especially if, after you get busy, you, finding someone that can manage your social media, I think is, is huge. Um, um, get a little um, disclaimer here. I get so many nice compliments about my social media posts and particularly on Instagram and all that kind of thing. Here's the secret. I do not know that. My, my, um, <laughs> my virtual assistant, Rachel does all of that yes. for me. And she also responds to most of it. And if it's something that I need to respond to, she, um, she just lets me know, okay, you got a message that you need to respond to a DM or a, you know, that sort of thing. So, yeah, so I would say that. And like you were saying, James, is just being being authentic, being genuine, um, because I think one of the problems with social media is it puts a persona out there that a lot of times in reality is not really you. And I think what I've learned over the years is people are attracted to genuineness. And I think they can pick up on that. And if it's not genuine, uh, people can see through it. Yeah. Great. Um, uh, I, so some, I like your tip about, uh, you don't have to be everywhere. Just be on the place that you use mm -hmm. and be in the place where maybe some, your, your preferred people use. So if you're targeting business people, LinkedIn, probably, mm -hmm. uh, if you're mm -hmm. doing tips and help, uh, Lisa's always big on, um, Pinterest, because people are searching for how to's and tips of so Pinterest mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. so you, you just pick one and become the, the best you can at that. And, you know, if you want to add later, do it later, but you don't have to do it all at once. Uh, Steve also had a great tip. Uh, Steve Besaw, um, he he said uh, Buffer. There's this program called Buffer and yes. you can post three for for their free version. You can post to three social media platforms uh, with one picture and one text. So the, what mm -hmm. I do, and I bet I started using it after he said it, and it's much easier mm -hmm. than what I was doing. Yeah. Uh, and and I, that's a, that's a program that I've been using for years and. Um, oh, you use Buffer. It's worth it. Yeah. I started using Buffer probably five years ago or more. Okay. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, part of the, our process is that Rachel, my assistant, she, plug you know uh slogs it out and gets it all done puts it in buffer and it it sets the schedule and it puts them out mm -hmm. there on a schedule so i mean it's a it's a great time saver and 
you can do a lot, lot more with it. We're we're using the premium version, so we we've got more more channels there or whatever. Um, I don't even yeah. know what it is now for the premium version. <laughs> well, I think it's five. When I checked, so I still am using the free version. Um, I'm only on three. I'm on Instagram, LinkedIn, and the Facebook. And so if I went to four, it would be, it's $5. I think it's $5 a channel. So it'd be 20, 20 bucks, you know, a yeah. month. But <laughs> dude, <laughs> posting all those times, it just, it's such a time saver. And then <laughs> I know with the premium version, you get analytics, which every, every time uh, I put, I don't get the analytics on the free version. So I'm like, really want to know how to improve this um pretty sure the analytics would help oh and the other thing with buffer not that this is the buffer show but uh <laughs> you can it has ai like like everything nowadays it has ai in it so you can say hey my post is about you know marketing my online course and it will write out this little thing that it customizes per channel so you can customize it for facebook customize it for Instagram, customize it for LinkedIn, for mm -hmm. the different audiences. And right. it's, it's such a time saver. So right. uh, I'm a right. big fan of Buffer. The other mm -hmm. one that does something like that is Meet Edgar, which mm -hmm. allows you to queue things and then save it in your library. And then it will keep reposting the things in your queue without you doing, uh, it's automatic, mostly automatic. Not everything's right. 100% automatic. Right. Yeah, I've I've heard a lot about. I've not I've never used Meet Edgar, but I've heard a lot about it. I've used it a little bit. It's it's also fairly easy to use. Though I think, I think um, Buffer. If I was going to pay for one, I'd probably pay for Buffer. Yes, yeah. I'm I'm yeah. a fan of it. Okay, so social media. Uh, uh, just a couple left here. We have a couple left. Uh, the next episode forty seven was on marketing your therapist. I had uh. Great guest, Allison Pigeon, on that episode. Uh, Allison's in the last couple of years has grown rapidly from one or two offices to I don't even know four or five with forty plus therapists or something. Mm -hmm. It really took off for her. So she was talking about uh, marketing your therapists and some of the challenges you have when it's not just you. You know, you're not uh -huh. just marketing yourself, and you have to kind of like, oh, how do I market other people? The download for that uh, episode was uh, just a marketing your therapist workbook. So there was about four topics with three to four questions per topic to help you uh, identify some values. The main I I items we talked about is how it, it evolves, your marketing strategy evolves, and how people start marketing on shared values, not necessarily about you know, your specialty, because when you get mm -hmm. so big, you're going to have, even it with a group of 10 therapists, you probably have different specialties or, you know, different things that you're good at. So how do you market that? So she started talking about marketing for your values and your shared values, which connect with uh, your audience. So yeah. Gordon, any wisdom on marketing for uh, other people that aren't yourself like a group yeah. group practice? Well, I think, uh, yeah, just to piggyback on that is really being able to look at the, at the qualities of your, you know, uh, and, and we're talking, I guess, in the context of, for a group practice, if you've got <clears throat> other therapists where you're maybe trying to fill up their caseloads and that kind of thing. Um, I think it's real important to put their personality out in front. Um, be interesting to know if that, um, and, and there have been some studies around that about, about how people choose a therapist. And the big thing is, is being able that they feel some sort of personal connection. You know, the, the number one um, efficacy um, uh, uh, factor, I guess you could say, for therapy is the therapist-client relationship. And so in your marketing, you want to be able to establish kind of that feel or that sort of thing. And so, you know, it's always a good idea to have videos of your, um, maybe on your website or that sort of thing. I know with psychology today, the, um, the, the profiles that do the best are the ones that have videos. 
Oh, do you, there's the, yeah. I, I don't use psychology today. Do you have to pay more for that or you just have to do it? You just do it. Um, okay. It's, um, it's well, a, a psychology today, I think it's included in their basic membership. Okay. And it's only 30, about 30 bucks a month. And so um, that's, um, yeah. So uh, psychology today is always, nearly always a good ROI for people as far as getting and, on a directory. And just a plug for, um, uh, I believe, oh, I hope I don't make a mistake here. But Laura Long did a how to get your how to how to do a great psychology today profile thing. It's mm -hmm. probably on her webpage, your badass therapy practice. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and uh she also did a podcast with Whitney on uh mm -hmm. on that. So I would go I'll I'll look it up in the show notes <laughs> and put it in the show notes about that psychology today. Cause I, I listened to it and I was like, oh wow. You know, it's simple, simple things, but it it see it really makes a big difference, like how she laid it out. So, uh, so videos for your your um, your group practice members. Now, you were talking about you want to promote the other people, and I think I know why. But why 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 did you? It was an offhanded comment, but why would you promote the other people and not just yourself over and over again? Well, I I think everybody has to um, look at you know, their situation. I know for me, I've scaled back a lot with the number of people that I see as clients. Um, and so um, if you go to our website, kingsportcounseling.com, you'll see I'm at the very bottom of the list <laughs> because I'm really <laughs> trying to, I'm really trying to fill up my other therapists uh, in the practice. And so, um, yeah. And so I think, um, you know, particularly with a group practice, that's, you know, that's the, where your bread and butter is, is, is filling up your, your clinicians caseloads. Um, mm. because if they're not seeing clients, yes. you're not making money. So, I mean, that's the uh, same thing with, you know, a solo practice. If you're not seeing clients, you're not, you're not making any money. And so that's an important, important piece of that. Um, when, when but, you're a group practice owner, you earn money differently. You're not just yes. an individual yes. contributor. You're putting yeah. everybody else in their best possible place. Right. Which is, you know, another reason why I don't I don't think the group practice owner should answer the phone and right. do screen yeah. calls. Right. Because you'll connect with the client and they'll be like, Oh, I love you because you're good. You know, you're uh -huh. good at your what you do. Right. And then they'll feel disappointed when they don't schedule with you. So right. Right. you know, I, I, I had do yeah, uh, yesterday it's funny. I had got a call at somewhere. I can't find out where it is, but somewhere or another, when people go to schedule with me, my my cell phone number is coming up in some places, and I don't know where oh, no. it's coming from. But anyway, they I thought it was um I thought it was someone else that was calling, and I answered the phone, and it was a client, a former client, <laughs> and so I told you know I just had to very graciously apologize and just say, look, I'm not taking mm -hmm. any more clients right now um kind of gave them a little bit about uh, what i'm what's going on for me but um anyway and told them you know you need to call the office number and so they seem to understand and i just said they can get you connected with somebody else in our practice that can help you yeah and uh yeah therapists are some of the most kind sensitive people and so that that can be really hard to mm -hmm. do those things, but it's necessary yeah. uh, when you have a group practice, especially because um, yeah. you've hired good people. So let them mm -hmm. see their people. Right. All right. We could probably talk a whole nother episode on this, uh, Gordon, <laughs> but uh, let's move on to oh, our next episode was marketing your mental health services. So not just like service and products and services. So if you have like a course or worksheets or uh, coaching or consulting for businesses, not necessarily therapy services. So uh, we did have Laura Long on the episode uh -huh. and she was amazing. Um, and the download for that was the dream client cheat sheet. So it it's uh, the dream client cheat sheet helps you identify what your values are and who you're fighting for and your must haves for your dream clients and your auto exclusions. Like, who are you going for? It's more niching. Yes, yes, uh -huh. it's more niching. Yeah. But we talked about finding your authentic 
passion, authentic, being authentic and making a difference one person at a time. I really like that point. Like find one person that you can help and do it great. All right. Then find five people just like that and then do it, you know, be excellent and then do it great. You're not helping, man. It, it was just, it was just a great message. You're not sending your message to the masses. You're actually trying to help that one, you know, that smaller group of people that you can right. help the best, the fastest, the quickest, the yep. most efficient. And it was just a great discussion on that. Uh, you're shaking yeah. your head. What are your thoughts on that, Gordon? Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, one of the things uh, I know this uh, it's kind of on my agenda for this next year with my own practice is, um, is to begin to start offering coaching services. So what, one of the things about, um, about that is that I think there's been a lot of, of maybe kind of bad press or press or negative impressions that people get about like, quote unquote, I'm using air quotes, life coaching versus therapy mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. um, a lot of therapists just don't see it as legitimate. But one of the ways I think to think about that is, is that usually people are coming to us to, for help with a specific problem. And one of the things about um, the way I distinguish, and I think this is generally understood within, you know, this world, the, the distinction between therapy versus coaching is that therapy, you dig into more the the deeper background issues that are just kind of overarching with person's life and that you're working through those and understanding those. Whereas coaching is, is, is something more specific. Like I want to be able to communicate with my spouse better, or I want to be able to um, have better time management, or I want to be able to um, uh, handle my anxiety conflict. in a yeah. different way or conflicts yeah. Yeah. in a different way. So, and that's, that's the way I distinguish that. But I think one of the things, um, sorry, I got way off on that tangent, but <laughs> one of the things about having other services and products for your, for your practice is, is that, um, particularly for a solo practitioner, especially, but it's also true for group practices, you can reach a ceiling of where there's only so many clients you can see in a day. There's only so many hours you can devote to one-on-one -on -one kind of interaction. So coming up with ways to go from the one-to-one -one way of doing business to the one-to-many. And so that's where coaching can come in, come into play because you can charge much more for coaching. And so you, um, you get more for your time, but also looking at things like courses and groups and, um, uh, different offerings, you know, um, can diversify your income quite a bit by doing those things and not having to depend on the, the like I said, the one-to-one -one way of making money and going to the one-to-many. Yeah. And, and um, I've said since the beginning of this podcast, I really do believe a therapist has at least one course or one worksheet or one workbook or one, you know, one extra thing inside them just they've you've gone to school for like eight years or mm -hmm. more and you've you've met many many people and you're getting good at your craft like you have a message that somebody right. needs like there yeah. you're, it's it's just the technology i think gets gets in the way of some people right. but there are yeah. people that can help you with that like that's one of the things i do i help people create courses and and Gordon, you, you help people do podcasts and, mm -hmm. you know, there's plenty of other people who help with other things. So, yeah. um, uh, yeah. I, I, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was just going to say, but yeah, just to reiterate, reiterate what you're saying is, is that as therapists, our skills translate in so many different ways and we have so much, we, we, we've, um, there's so many things that we know that we take for granted that other people just in the general public don't necessarily know. I mean, it's, uh, we're kind of ingrained with kind of um, what it takes to be emotionally intelligent, for example, mm. of how to manage our emotions well and how to deal with 
all the feelings and all of that kind of thing. But not everybody knows that. And I think we take that for granted. So being able to share your knowledge about that, being able to share um, just how people can get better with that. Um, the other thing, too, I'll say real quickly here, James, is, is that you were talking about a course. Um, if you were to think about it as a therapist, when you're sitting with people, I bet you you say pretty much the same things over and over again in the therapy room. Well, that right there is a course or a book or something that is going to resonate with somebody out there. Um, you know, if you <laughs> um, you go to the bookstore or, or, or look on Amazon, I mean, nobody goes to a bookstore anymore. But um, <laughs> um, but if you go to a bookstore and you look at the self-help section, all of it is pretty much the same stuff, but it's just. Uh, repackaged in a different way and how it's packaged is going to resonate differently with people in different ways. Great. So, so that's awesome. So just if you're thinking about trying to do something, I, I would start going forward because don't let the perfect be the enemy of your, your progress. Uh, I had to learn that lesson for like 20 years, <laughs> still, still struggling with that. Um, uh, but yeah, okay, so that was episode 49. Uh, episode 50 was ep episode fifty was uh, marketing your therapy services with referrals and word of mouth. Uh, we talked about the download was the heart method of responding to customer complaints. It's something I learned while working at a hospital system. It's just hear, empathize, apologize, respond, and thank. And it really de-escalates uh, complaints to where Frontline mm -hmm. staff can handle m like 90% of the complaints just by diffusing the energy of what is going on by giving people a, a place to respond where they're respected and valued. Doesn't mean you have to, you know, fold, fold, I'm putting fold in air quotes and give and mm -hmm. give everybody what they want. Sometimes people just want to be heard. And if you can get that out there, then it doesn't there's nothing to fight against. <laughs> mm -hmm. So anyways, uh, that's the heart method and that's a free download. We talked about um, the importance of building a positive uh, reputation in your community and then also uh, networking, like going, we talked about conferences again and local events and doing things, doing things like get it, getting people together for things that you need and that they also need and then watch it grow. So um, mm -hmm. that was uh, that was word of mouth. Um, so, Gordon, uh, what do you what is your thoughts on marketing with net by networking and word of mouth? Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things um, that I think people end up getting intimidated by is they think, OK, I'm going to go to this event so I can network. You know, they and they and they go go to an event with with this agenda in hand in hand and I'm gonna hand out my business cards and you know, make sure everybody know in the room knows me. Well that I think that's as intimidating <laughs> as hell for most people. And mm -hmm. um yeah, and so I think really if you think about networking, it is just really simply building relationships, which we do in the therapy room. I mean, it's something that we do just kind of naturally. And I think just being, being involved um, in your community in whatever form that takes, you know, whether it's through your church relationships, synagogue relationships, or, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be religious, but just different community kind of gatherings and stuff. I mean, um, uh, the other night I went to hear some live music at a place here in town. Uh, shout out to Model City Tap Room and one of our one of my favorite local bands. And people are going to laugh at the name. Their name is Donnie and the Dry Heavers. So, but they are. <laughs> I'm friends with a lot of the band members. They're they're quite a bit younger than me. But um, anyway, <laughs> when I go to those events, we I see some of the same people, and so I interact with them. And um, what's interesting is, is that a lot of those people I've also seen as clients. So it's a little bit, you know, 
And, when, and, you know, and that's where you have to navigate the whole dual relationship kind of thing. But the big thing is, is that I, I can't tell you how many times that I get calls or I've gotten calls from people that are just people that I've known in the community. And they said, oh, so-and-so who you know said I should call you about this particular issue. And so just making sure people know what you do, um, being out there with people and interacting with people. Um, doesn't necessarily it doesn't have to be with the full intent of I'm marketing or uh, I'm um, networking you're just making those connections just regular human connections which goes full circle around just this whole marketing thing it's about building relationships that's that's great advice I think when we look at it like that it's a little less intimidating because as therapists you already you know you do know how to build relationships and you do know, mm-hmm. have that high emotional EQ and uh, you're, you're just doing what you are already doing just in a different context. So, right. Right. And the, the, the thing too is, is you gotta be like, going back to what we said at the, I think at the beginning before we lost power, but um, being, being persistent and consistent with those things. I mean, you can't just go to one event and just or and just expect that to be okay, check that off the box. I don't have to do that again. No, it's a it's an ongoing thing of just building relationships in the community at a level that you're comfortable with. Yeah, it does it takes time. Uh, consistency is important. Awesome. So that was episode 50, uh, word of mouth. Uh, episode 51 was marketing your mental health services with podcasting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, I, for that, the download was just uh, I compared four or five hosting platforms because that's a big question I get. Like, where do mm-hmm. I host this and how much does it cost? What do they offer? So I did a comparison chart and put it on a, a Google sheet. And so that's the download. Mm-hmm. So uh, with podcasting, we talked about the benefits of networking and collaboration, just getting a lot of ideas from other people, but also meeting neat, neat people. And just it exposes you to. Um, just uh, some great uh, minds in the field. Uh, we talked about having a goal. So if you have a goal for your podcast, it's much easier to produce and develop and mm-hmm. uh, just knowing why you're doing it. And it, just keeping that in focus also helps you build your audience because once again, it's the niche type thing. If you create mm-hmm. a podcast for everyone, you know, all therapists or all experts you're you're gonna get very few people unless you're mm-hmm. like probably really funny and then your then your podcast is about humor and not necessarily mm-hmm. about your topic but and that works uh, for people i mean yeah there are, there are podcasts out there well i mean you know quick shout out to uh aaron and nathan at shrink think um their yeah. um their podcast is about the therapy experience but they put so much humor into it um, of just being They're able very to talk entertaining. about that. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, and, and it fits with their personalities too. If you mm-hmm. ever get to know Aaron and Nathan, they are just absolutely hilarious and fun to be with. And, um, but yeah, so you, you know, again, it's, um, kind of the, kind of the bullet points that I would say with this is that podcasting is really just, uh, in many ways, just, a another way to network, uh, because, the nature of podcasting, if you think about the ones that maybe those of you that listen to podcasts, you're listening to this one, obviously, but there's a there's a sense of intimacy that comes with it where you're, you, you, you know, most of us listen to with our earbuds in or that sort of thing. And um, and so, yeah, and so we um, we have that sense of intimacy, which also gives genuineness again again being on a podcast and just being yourself and just you know interacting with the microphone in a way that you would with people um is 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 always helpful the other thing too is that podcasting is absolutely booming right now i mean it's um it's just it's just exploding as far as a content uh, a way to get your content out there um, and it's, um, you know, there's, it's, 
is quickly replacing blogging, I think, to some degree. And again, going back to what we talked about at the beginning about SEO, podcast ties into that as well. If you have a podcast and you have those backlinks and all that kind of thing, it's going to help your SEO um, and also establish establish you as an expert in your field. Right. And Lisa, Lisa uh, Mustard is from the therapy show is always saying, even if you don't want to do it long term, release a limited series, you know, mm-hmm. 12 issue, 10 issue, five issue, whatever limited series where people can ex- get exposed to some of your teaching, your expertness. And so they get to know you like you and trust you. Mm-hmm. And you can that can be a big that's also, you know, another lead magnet type idea where you just mm-hmm. develop some content and uh, produce it and put it out there and let people know it's a limited series. And now it's an evergreen marketing calling card postcard for people to be like, oh, they they do know about this subject. They can help me Mm -hmm. with my issue, whether you're a coach, you know, coaching people through issues, relationships or life transitions, or you're a therapist and you're, you know, you're, you're working with a disorders or those types of stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, a podcast can be a really good, even if you're not going to do it long-term, like I have podcasts on my feed that they haven't produced another episode, but I just keep, I keep them on, (laughs) I keep them on the feed and like listen to them Mm -hmm. every once in a while because they are just, you know, good, good information. So, yeah. Yeah. And that, that, that's the thing about podcasting too, is that your, your content becomes evergreen, if you will. And um, even if it's an older older episode um people are still picking them up and still listening to them and it's kind of like a Mm. you know in a way kind of like a blog but it's for many people it's easier to consume in that way i guess or or listen to i know when i'm out walking in the mornings that's what i'm doing i'm listening to podcasts Mm -hmm. or an audio book that kind of thing or if i'm in the car especially i'm i'm listening to something like that rather than just music you know yeah. Yeah. Lots of podcasts. Mm-hmm. Yep. Awesome. Uh, we'll talk about the SciCraft Network at the end, but, mm-hmm. but we'll we'll plug that. Um, the there were two two episodes left. I have not produced them yet, uh, so I don't have a download for them or a summary. But uh, I talked with uh, David Hall from Psych Maven for episode. It'll be episode fifty three uh, on marketing with webinars. And webinars is sort of like another lead magnet or another uh, another free piece of value. All When I say lead magnet, I hope you hear gift. <laughs> I hope you hear value. I hope you hear service. It's not like manipulation or, mm-hmm. you know, oh, I'm going to bait and switch people. It's, it's really trying to help people with one specific problem. And webinars are just a little bit longer form of that where you you come in and you do a presentation on one specific issue and and get people to um to uh they give you their email address and then mm-hmm. you will keep offering them more value and more value but every once in a while you offer them something to sell to see if they want to um get your paid value mm-hmm. uh, in fact i am signed up for two webinars <laughs> This week, because they are solving a simple problem for me. The first one is how to make interview. Okay, it's with uh, Descript. Uh, Descript mm-hmm. is my um, my podcasting editor. And man, every week they have something amazing. And this this one is how to make interview podcasts with Descript. So I am already I already do that. I do that a lot. But there, are, I feel like I could be sharper. So that solves mm-hmm. a simple problem. Just as an example, I do that, but I want to get better at it. They have the tool. They're going to show me how they do it. So that mm-hmm. solves a simple problem. They're not giving me away the product. They're not, you know, they're, they're not, there's nothing to necessarily buy, but they're helping me use the product better. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, well, one thing I'll interject yeah. here um, is that, I, you know, one way to think about um webinars is that usually they they are um not to sound too salesy but they are part of a sales funnel a lot of times it's a funnel and sure that, sure yeah yeah and so but the webinar in a webinar you present why somebody would want to do something or buy something 
and the benefits of that. And then the um, actual product is the how to is the how mm -hmm. you do do whatever it is that you're teaching or that kind of thing. And so, um, yeah. And so that's, that's one way to kind of think about webinars in that sense. No, excellent point. Um, and yes, it is part of a sales funnel. It is part of your know, like, and trust. So people eventually, uh, decide that you are somebody they want to do business with, but it's, it's really hard to like put something out there like, Oh, here's, here's my coaching or consulting service buy from me without them experiencing some of your coaching and consulting service. So webinars mm -hmm. uh, do a lot uh, to, to do that. And it's just a little bit longer form. It can be a little interactive, right. With uh, like questions, Q and a, um, what, what, uh, now you've done webinars in the past. I know Gordon, um, mm -hmm. what has been successful for you? Like, do you have one tip on that? Yeah, it's a, it's, it's like, uh, like a lead, lead, you know, earlier we were talking about lead magnets. And as you just said, you know, webinars could be a form of a lead magnet, but, um, I think you, you have to give just really good value, um, you know, whether somebody buys something from you or signs up for something from you, um, if you can make it, it, you know, make it really um, valuable content that's rich and that people are going to find value in, um, that's just going to help you all the way around. Um, I think, um, you know, you, as we said, to give your best stuff away mm -hmm. um, and then people will you know, people, people can, um, that resonates with people. And, uh, I know, um, uh, people often don't buy the first time they see things, something. So I know I've been to several different webinars and eventually bought from something. So mm -hmm. don't, don't, you know, everybody's on their journey. Not everybody is ready to buy right away. But if you keep providing that value when they're ready, they, they will buy. You don't have to manipulate people like that's if if you're manipulating people into buying something, that's that's probably not uh, your dream client. You know, your mm -hmm. dream client is somebody who's like, oh, I need this. It's solving my problem. Mm -hmm. I know how it can help. And I trust them. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. And the. The episode 52, which I have not produced yet, is Advanced Marketing Strategies or Five Advanced Marketing Strategies with Joshua Brummel, Brummel, Brummel from uh, Therapy Flow. Uh, man, he was awesome. He had a great mm -hmm. uh, episode. I really respect him and his services. And uh, we talked a lot about lead magnets and um, niching and uh, one of the one of the things he recommended, which is like mark segmentation. So if you have an email marketing list, you know who the the program knows who opened the email, and the program knows who clicked it. And he suggests you can segment some of those people and either target them with different emails or different ads. And he mentioned something called a pixel i don't know if it's a facebook pixel or google pixel or something where that tracks people across platforms and so mm -hmm. ads can show up in their feeds that you can target them you know, if they click something or if they abandon your lead magnet you know they go in and they like get halfway through but they don't fill out the form you can target them with an email or an ad that says mm -hmm. Hey, you missed out on this opportunity. Would you like to do that? So I thought he was really good. Uh, what do you have market segmentations, Gordon, or do you, what do you think about? It? Well, yeah. So with my, particularly with my email, um, if there is um, something I'm promoting, uh, at least in my email platform, which I use Aweber, um, you can, uh, you can tag people when they click on a link or, open an email, that kind of thing, which is what you're talking about. And what's nice is that once you tag them is, is you can maybe follow up with, okay, what questions do you have about this? Or, you know, um, get, you know that they're interested. 
Um, <laughs> you know, um, it's it's funny. It it yes, this week I've been kind of starting the process of car shopping, and um, Google knows everything that I'm doing. Um, and it's just amazing how many car ads show up on everything, you know, whether it's Facebook or whatever. All of that is is connected. Like it or not, that's what the um, <laughs> the world we live in. Um, and I know people feel differently about, you know, having things tracked. But, um, you know, it's um, um, I had a car salesman reach out to me, you know, after. Wow. Of course, I, I did get my, give them my email and my phone number and everything. And after I typed in my phone number, my phone was lighting up like five minutes later. Again, that's high pressure sales, which we're not into in this kind of industry. But right. those those tools are available to us. And I think, um, you know, if you can, particularly if you're starting your practice or trying to grow your practice, some of those things can be helpful, and you can also do them in a tasteful and non-high pressure way. Awesome, and uh, I am I am going to be doing a webinar with Joshua. Uh, it's the last. Uh, oh, I'll have to put it in the show notes. It's the end of January. We're going to be talking about um, lead magnets. He did that uh, presentation about on Whitney's conference about um, the seven. Oh, I'm going to get it wrong. Sorry, Joshua. But it was like seven things to have really good lead magnets to like connect with people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sure the title's much better than what mm -hmm. I just yeah. said. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, it, it was so impressive. And he's going to he's going to redo that with me in a webinar form. And um, I just hope everybody will come to see that because it was it was eye opening and also simple and clear just how he is. So mm -hmm. um that was uh so that was episode fifty two, uh five advanced marketing strategies and I will have a download for that as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so those were the the episodes, um and this was our recap show. Mm -hmm. uh, Gordon, do you normally I end with one thing? So mm -hmm. and then also where can people find you? So I'll do my one thing, and then you can think about one thing you want people to remember. And I think the uh, the thing that is impressing me about all the 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 episodes that we did is authenticity. You know, being yourself, uh, uh, being being authentic. Uh, don't try to sell to everyone. Just sell to the sell or help the person that you can help the best, and uh, work with them. Get that worked out really well. And then that is going to connect with other people. So mm -hmm. um, I love I love the marketing um, to one person, being really specific and niche down, and then um, be being authentic in, mm -hmm. in all domains. You know, social media and your prac and your in your online and your blogging and all those things. So that's my one thing I want people to remember. Uh, Gordon, do you have one thing? that you want people to remember from this episode? Well, I think um, what I think about marketing is that um, the truth of the matter is, is that we don't have to convince people to use our services. There are more than enough people out there that are looking for us and looking for our services and looking for help. And so I think uh, marketing is a way of just simply making it so that people can find you easily. Of putting yourself there out there, whether it's on online, on you know through networking, or all the things that we talked about in this this particular episode, is putting yourself out there in a way where people can easily find you and and develop a relationship with you and connect with you. Um, you know, my my office building. I, this is kind of a metaphor. Is um, actually located on a a busy corner in downtown Kingsport where I am. And um, I'm, I'm always curious. I wonder how many people have learned about us just by passing our building. It's placed in a, it uh, not intent. I mean, just luckily my building's in a place that's very visible. And so um, 
think about marketing in that way, just putting yourself out there, making yourself visible and um, <clears throat> creating ways in which people can connect with you and a lot of different through a lot of different avenues. Great, great wisdom. Uh, thanks for being with me these last two days, mm -hmm. <laughs> Gordon. <laughs> Yes. Uh, do you have any projects you want to talk about or where can people find you online? Yes. Well, well a few places you can find me. One <clears throat> is just my website, practiceoftherapy.com. You can go there and connect with me. Um, and also uh, through the Sightcraft Network, which this podcast is a part of. And um, <clears throat> just a quick plug for that is just that the Sightcraft Network is really a community it's a community of like-minded podcasters in this kind of space of, of mental health, business building, uh, self-help, all of those kinds of things. And um, we just support each other in the network and help each other with different things like um, increasing our downloads, helping us connect with advertisers um, that want to pay us to be on our programs. And um, yeah, and so... You can find that at just simply sitecraftnetwork.com. Great. Thank you. I'm proud to be a part of the yes. Sitecraft Network. It's been really beneficial. So thanks for that. All right. Well, that that is the show. Thank you, Gordon, for being with me. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Uh, yeah. Um, so this is the uh, Scaling Therapy Practice, where we encourage you to take intentional steps towards sustainable growth. We'll see you next time. Thanks so much for joining us on the episode today. If you wouldn't mind, please give us a review on iTunes or your podcast player of choice. It really helps us find new listeners and do more cool things with the show. Make sure you sign up for the seven steps for more clients using lead magnets. That's coming up super quickly, January 25th at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, and 1 p.m. Central. I uh, look forward to having you there. Listen to Josh Brummel from Therapy Flow. As once again, he, he knows his stuff and uh, it's a very clear message. So make sure you sign up for that. Finally, I wanted to share about the, to begin to share about the future of the Scaling Therapy Practice uh, season three. I wanna focus more on helping therapists and the healers uh, get their content into the hands of more people using online courses, online content. Uh, I kind of, I wrote out a, uh, a little mini mission statement, I suppose, that I'll flesh out in the next episode. But I support healing experts use online content to reach, improve, and transform the lives of their dream clients. So what does that mean? How am I going to unpack that? What is online content? What are dream clients? You know, how do you improve those things? Uh, stay tuned, listen to the next episode, and I'll talk about my vision of season three and moving forward for the scaling therapy practice. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, we will see you next episode and uh, register for that webinar. Psych Maven is proud to support the Scaling Therapy Practice Podcast. If you go to stp.psychmaven.com, you can take our free personal inventory and find out what your builder type is as a helping professional. This assessment is quick and fun, and it comes with tons of customized resources with your results, so you can discover the best ways to scale that match your own personality. Find the assessment at stp.psychmaven.com.